Hello, I'm David DeCosmo. Welcome to ECTV Live. Joining me today, Craig Lukacs from the LAC Wax Sanctuary. Now that name may sound foreign to many people who know of its, I don't want to call it a sister lake exactly, but Lake Wallenpalpak is well known in our area. And not very far away is this sanctuary which uh, is based around a lake that was Craig Glacier formed, right? Right, right Glacier formed. Uh, and it's amazing, you're so close to this major recreational center, uh, but you're kind of the unknown treasure to a lot of people. We are, I mean, we're trying to be the, not to be the unknown treasure uh, <laughs> to everybody. We have one mile shoreline on Lake Wall and Palm Pack oh. of our property. So uh, we do have um, a protected, uh, when you drive on, boat on Wall and Palm Pack, we're pretty much the only spot that has no houses or docks or anything like that. So um, you can really point this out when you're actually on the lake itself. I, I never realized yeah. that, that, that there's a common, a common shoreline to that one, uh, one sector. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, the sanctuary has a fantastic history. We've talked about it when you visited us before, but I can't assume that everybody watching has right. watched before. Right. So let's go back and talk about, um, well, first of all, the origins of the lake, but then more importantly, the development of the sanctuary. Sure. Well, I mean, obviously our lake is about 13,000 years old because it's a glacial lake. Um, and then the sanctuary was uh, started by the Connell family of Scranton uh, as a summer home, a hunting cabin back in 1903. Uh, there's a, a historic lodge which is on the National Registry of Historic Places uh, with this whole complex, a carriage house, ice house, coachman's house, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, they built it around the lake so that they can have recreation of swimming, fishing, and stuff like that. So uh, um, then you go ahead a little bit into um, really the uh, teens or the getting close to the 20s. The Watchers family of Scranton bought the property because they had an interest in hydroelectric power and they bought the land to also buy all the other land around uh, the area which would become what is now Lake Wall and Palm Pack. So the family has been involved, that family, the Watchers family has been involved since the 20s really with LACWAC and they're the ones who basically gave the sanctuary um, to a nonprofit, made the nonprofit back in 1966. Up until then, though, it was a, a family recreational spot. It was. As you say, hunting and fishing and, right. and, and such. Yeah. Um, there was never any plans for any hydroelectric facility on that lake, was there? Oh, no, because we don't have any in, in coming water into the lake. Our water is basically uh, fed through the watershed, so uh, there's no kind of water going. So what they did for the Wall and Palm Pack is they dammed up the uh, uh, Wall and Palm Pack Creek or the Wall and Palm Pack River that was going through there, and that's what formed the lake. So there's a couple uh, tributaries that go into the lake. Um, they dammed up that area, too. Yeah, so, some people yeah. forget that Lake Wall and Palm Pack is not a natural lake. It was... Uh, created by what at, at that time I guess was Pennsylvania Power and Light Company. Right. Uh, the um, uh, electrical facility has changed management and, and corporation several times. It still does produce uh, hydroelectric power. Yeah. Uh, so it's still in use as not only a recreational facility that most of us would recognize Wall and Pawpack as, but also as a, a power producing entity. Now. Unlike Wall and Paul Pack, the lake at the sanctuary uh, is very much a preserved facility. You don't want right. uh, the fishing and the heavy boating and the recreation, the skiing and things. <laughs> exactly. You don't want that in your facility. And it's not too big. It's it's only 52 acres. So we allow. Um, we use rowboats and also canoes on the lake. Uh, those boats have never touched any other lakes. Um, so we don't let any outside watercraft in the in the uh, lake itself, so it's to protect the lake so that, because we do scientific research on the lake. Right. So um, that's really the most important thing is that we claim, and we're still, you know, uh, this is a claim back from 1966 that it's the most southern glacial lake, nearly pristine glacial lake in the hemisphere. Now, uh, something you said it, it just interests me quite a bit. So you have a, a canoe that uh, the sanctuary owns that's used on the lake. Someone else has a canoe they've, they've had on Wallapalpac or uh, some other lake. You don't want that no. in your water. Something like that can carry uh, 
something with it that would right. disturb your, your natural yeah, setting? Yeah, invasive species or algae that um, most of the invasive species that come in, you know, the plant life, uh, there could be, um, you know, some aquatic life that are attached to the boat. I mean, you can clean the boat, but we don't even risk that with cleaning with bleach and stuff like that. So. And now that you say that, my mind goes back to, was it the zebra mussel? Yes. Uh, up in uh, the Thousand Islands, mm -hmm. up in uh, that area, which ironically, I guess, was initially uh, a, a destructive organism right. and then evolved yep. as it were and and now is really a, an attribute to them but yeah, yeah. you'd rather not take any chances. We don't want to take chances <laughs> we want to keep our lake as natural as possible. Right, yeah. right. Um, and, and we want to talk more about the research that's done there and how the sanctuary itself is used uh, but I don't want to ignore the main reason that I invited you here right. which is a unique um, uh, exercise that you run every year. It's now the sixth year. Yes. Craig, this is the lake to lake. So we're talking about Wallapalpac and the lake at the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. This is the lake to lake run, which is now, talk about the word evolved into a walk. And I think last time I heard you were also inviting uh, pets to, yes. to come along. Yes. Tell uh, us about the event, uh, right. when it is, why it is. Yeah. Uh, so it's our sixth year doing this. Um, about six years ago when I started working at the sanctuary, I had this idea, well, you know what? We have all these trails, and um, trail runs are not, I mean, they're popular, but we don't have many trail runs in the area, you know, so a lot of 5Ks. So we decided to have a 5K initially. Um, at, as it evolved, we decided we have enough space to do an 8K, which is basically five miles. So now we have an 8K run, we do a walk, which is about a 5K walk for the people. Um, it's just basically about a three-mile walk. And then we also have a, what we call a dog wag. So the dogs are welcome to walk as well, or I guess, you know, to uh, accompany their owners on the trails. Okay, and is this a fundraiser for the facility? It is. It, we look at it as a fundraiser, but also a way to get the public to LACWAC because, you know, we want a lot of people to come visit if they've never seen it. So, My initial point, yeah. that, that more people have got to learn about this. Yeah, so it's a, it's a way to get people there, but it's also a good way to raise money for the, for the sanctuary and our education programs. Right. So when is the uh, run this year? This year, it's Sunday, October 20th. Uh, the race starts at 930. People can start arriving at 8 o'clock to register, kind of, you know, hang out, kind of, you know, just get warmed up for the run and stuff like that, so. And registrations can any time now, or? Yes, registration's open. Um, you know, our website is really easy. It's lackawack.org. That's L-A-C-A-W-A-C. -A -A um, and people can go on the main page. There's a link there to, uh, to the race page where they can either register online through Scranton uh, Running Company, um, they're our, our running timing company, or they can actually download a form and then also mail it in as well. Okay, and how is it? How has it gone over the years? Because you were uh, the the you know the thinker behind the first yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, how has it been going? It's been going really well. I mean, we've increased the number of people coming. I mean, you know, to say something that you've been doing it for six years is really a, a really a good thing. So um, we're really happy with the way it's turned out, and it's just a it's just a great time to get out in the fall weather. You know, you never know in October if there will be snow on the ground at that time of no, year. You can never tell. Or, <laughs> but in the last couple of years, this has been really, really beautiful weather for the for the run. So I would think it would be prime season. You start getting the leaves already beginning to change. Yeah, you know, I so. think I think this year because um, we're a little later this year because the Scranton Marathon is the week before ours, and um, so it's always been a week before ours. But I think theirs is a little bit later this year. Um, so the kind of way it's it's situated, we had to move ours a week. So I think. Uh, there's going to be a lot more leaves on the trail this year than on the trees. Well, I'll tell you what, it's good that you don't compete with that because you're going to bring some of the same, yeah. especially the runners, you know, yeah. more, more so than the walkers or those that may right. bring the pets along. But the runners have their their preferred uh, routes. No, yeah, no like one ever to... schedules a race on, on the weekend that the marathon's going on. No, so. no, that, that bad, bad move, no. bad move yeah. entirely. Yeah. Uh, so you can register now if you're interested in this. What is the registration fee? Uh, right now, it's uh, twenty-five dollars for the run, and I believe it's uh, fifteen for the uh, the walk. It goes up in a little bit. Um, I forget what date. The uh, as it gets closer to the race, we increase the fee a little bit. So we're in pre-registration right. right now. So, and I've suggested that you are neighbors with Lake Wall and Ballback. In right. fact, you you just said that they've got a, some common borderline there. But exactly how do you get to the sanctuary? Let's say you're coming from here in Scranton. Right, from Scranton it's really easy. You take Interstate 
um, well, pick up 81 to 84. And basically, you're Interstate 84 to exit 20, which is the Lake Wall Pompac slash Greentown exit. And we're basically about um, three or four miles off of the exit. And you can't, you, you can't get lost getting there because there's big brown directional signs that say Lackawack, you know, and then the arrows that turn at a certain point. So you can't, you can't miss getting there. So. All right. When, and we'll review uh, the dates and all the information on uh, the run before we close today's program. Uh, now let's turn to the programs that are offered year-round uh, at the sanctuary. Uh, what they are, what you offer to the public, and, and why they're important environmentally. So one of the biggest things I just want to mention that we've done uh, since the last time we probably spoke is we actually uh, purchased a, uh, our founder's home, which was in the middle of our property, and we're converting it into our environmental ed center. Was this the lodge you spoke of before? No, this is, the lodge has been there since 1903. This is a separate home that our founder, when he started the property, the nonprofit in 1966, uh, built his home. So he had about a less than an acre of property, which is not the sanctuary, now is the sanctuary's property, ah. and he built his home there. So he lived in the, basically in the heart of the, of the sanctuary. Um, so we purchased that land back last year and the building and our goal is to build onto the building to construct more space so that we can have our environmental ed programs and so what does that entail it entails public programs for the public um, you know about hikes uh, different topics about like mushrooms or birds of prey or different things about the environment but we also host uh, K-12 to programs there too I would even say pre-K to 12 programs, which is a lot of field trips coming in the fall and also the spring. Um, we get a lot of local districts to come up there to, uh, after we do maybe say an in-classroom presentation, they come up and they do a hands-on activity at the sanctuary. So we basically bring in about 3,000 kids a year. Wow. Wow. to the sanctuary for field trips. So we have the education programs that are open to the public. We have the ones really just to the uh, school groups. And then obviously we bring some college classes in as well too. So this is a, uh, the building now can hold what, a classroom type setting? Right now, as you can imagine, it's a ranch style home. So we're converting the garage into a classroom. The main open living room, dining room area will be a hall. And then we're going to be building a, you know, pending funding, of course, you know, that it takes a lot of money, uh, a large 40 by 40 square foot um, uh, room off the back of it facing our pond. We have a couple ponds on property. And so it'll be a great venue to host these programs. The school groups are, um, any really group, a retreat, that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, and we've talked so many times on the program about and I think environmental education may be the, uh, uh, the great example, perhaps the greatest, that while you can get so much from textbooks, you can only get so much from textbooks. Right. And when you, when you can take a program with a hands-on approach, and especially with youngsters when yeah. it comes to uh, environmental education, uh, it's, it's a cliche, but these yeah. are the future. These are the future folks, and for them to do the hands-on, what I mean, what kind of hands do they test? Water? What? Uh... Yeah. So you know, one of our taglines is shaping the next generation of scientists and earth stewards. You know, so we really want to teach the the public and the and the kids that come to us about what it means to protect the earth. And and so the way you can do that, you can do by, via textbook, but we're a firm believer that LACWAC is a living laboratory and a living classroom. That's the most important thing. It's a living classroom where kids come. We, we do samples of water where we look at macroinvertebrates, which is the little small organisms living in the lake or in the ponds. Um, we're doing that type of work. We're going out to the forest, measuring trees, looking at plant growth. So there's a lot of different things, different topics that we cover. Um, you know, geology. Um, so basically, uh, every grade has a different kind of uh, topic that they cover based on their curriculum in school. So like really fourth grade, fifth grade is about watersheds. So we do a lot of water work with those grades. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so it's based on the curriculum. So we kind of match what the teachers are teaching in the classroom with what we do and bring them and do hands-on there. That's, that's got to be very rewarding for, uh, for the kids. A as you yourself are there all the time, yeah. and there's so much, you know, we've seen <sighs> very recently in the headlines, tremendous uh, 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 headlines concerning the environment. Uh, the young lady from is it Sweden or Switzerland right, that's uh, right. sort of been leading the fight and getting a lot of the press. Uh, 
and the cries of, of danger, of, of climate change, and what could, or, what are you seeing? Are you seeing things that back up this concern? Right, so our science is one of the, one of our things that is part of our mission. Our mission is research, education, preservation. So the research side of LACWAC is where we use our lake, basically, and our forest. What we found with uh, monitoring our lake since the 60s, uh, long-term data since the 1992, where we're actually taking measurements of temperature, the pH of the water, um, oxygen levels, nitrogen levels. What we have found with the temperature of the water is that the surface level of the temperature has been increasing. Um, over the years. Uh, we do not do anything to our lake. It's basically, um, it changes because of the atmospheric conditions. Um, so whatever's around in the atmosphere. Uh, we compared our lake to other lakes across the world, across the globe, and they're also counting the same problems as well. So, so I mean, you, share, you share data with, with other organizations. Yeah. Worldwide. Right. So we're really a globally recognized organization in terms of research because we share that. I mean, you were talking about the United Nations. There have been some faculty that have worked at LACWAC that have presented their research to the United Nations about what is happening in terms of the climate around the world. Um, so we are involved directly with that. I know that, that brings up a lot of issues with people whether or not it's happening. What we know is that the temperatures are changing. Uh, the ice on the lake does not stay um, throughout the summer, uh, not summer, throughout the whole winter. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you know, used to get uh, solid in, ice in the past. Yeah. The ice stayed. Yeah, stayed now it's on and off. So that's a concern to us as well too. You know, it means that the the uh, winters are a little bit warmer. They're not staying super cold. You know, I know we get some snow effects. So these um, these large, um, basically these large storms that we get now um, is what really affects the temperature of the lake. What's happening now is that where the the plants and the animal life survive in the lake is getting smaller because oxygen levels are decreasing. Uh, because the temperature is rising, so we're basically lowering the, the amount of space that these uh, aquatic life can live in. Mm -hmm. So uh, there can be debate anywhere as to the cause or causes yeah. of climate change, right. but you are seeing the scientific evidence that whatever the cause, yeah. it's happening. Yeah, we're looking, we're not really researching what is the cause, we're just saying, here's what's happening to this lake, mm -hmm. and this is what's happening to this lake and lakes across the world, and so we need to figure out why this is happening, you know, so there's something changing in the environment that is causing these lakes to change, which causes, it, it's a ripple effect, you know, it changes, you know. It, it, ha it changes our lake and it changes what happens to the birds because they're eating the fish and then, it, you know, it, it just, it, into the forest and it just, it, it basically ripples into water supply, you know, how clean water is now mm -hmm. and stuff like that yeah. too, so, yeah. Uh, do you do any testing right in Wallen Pack since it's that close? We do um, some work with Wallen Pack. Uh, we use a lot of other lakes across the um, uh, the region. We basically have a program where we help other lake associations monitor their water quality of their lakes. So we don't really work specifically with Wall Palm Pack because they have their own watershed management district that man manages the lake quality, but we work with a lot of other lakes across the region. What about water levels in your lake? Water levels are definitely up and down. You know, last year when it was so rainy, we, we are very high in the lake. We, do, we have um, a beaver dam that basically keeps oh. our water steady, um, but our lake is actually decreasing in size because sedimentation, uh, dirt, and stuff like that from the forest is basically encroaching upon the lake. So mm -hmm. the lake has decreased in size over the years. I think this, this uh, it's amazing that all of this scientific work is going on so close to uh, our metropolitan areas here, right. and yet a lot of people don't really understand that this is happening. Right. And yet the results that you're getting are showing, again, that there's definitely been some climatic change right. uh, for whatever the reason. Um, you are not, however, strictly a scientific uh, endeavor. Yep. Uh, you are, to a certain extent, a recreational facility as well, yeah. controlled though it may be. Yep. So if, uh, if Joe Citizen wants to come up to uh, the sanctuary, there are things for yeah. he or she to do. Right. What kinds of things? So we're basically open to the public from dawn to dusk. Um, um, we have about nine miles of trails uh, that go through different varied 
um, you know, uh, areas of the property, you know, some rocky areas, some, you know, some beautiful areas that have rhododendron and stuff like that. So um, the, the nine miles of trails, two trails of which are open to biking, to mountain biking. Oh. The rest are for walking. Dogs are welcome. People ask us all the time, are dogs welcome on our trails? They are. Um, so we basically want the public to come up, hike, you know, picnic, you know, uh, uh, bring lunch, go down to Lake Wall and Palm Pack, where you can hike down there, go on the shoreline, go to our lake. You know, so we just encourage people to come out, photographers to come out, take photos, um, you know, people to do uh, nature hikes, you know, bring their group out, you know, that do yoga and stuff like that. We do those type of programs too, but we encourage other people to come out to do the same. Okay. Uh, where, where someone want to take advantage of the facility, just for a hike, for instance, do they have to pay to do that? Can they just come out? What? Yeah, we're a nonprofit, so we like to take donations. We suggest a donation uh, when people come on property, but it's not required. So there's mm -hmm. no cost to come to our property. Uh, nonprofit, however, does not mean that there's no expense involved yes, of course. in running. Hence, we get back to the lake to lake uh, uh, run. But uh, I would assume that uh, to because of the work you do on the scientific basis, that you would be eligible for various grants. Yep. Uh, do you do you seek out grants? To oh yeah, that's a big part of our funding is grants, uh, both for science and education purposes. So um, that's a big part of our budget. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the donations and again registration for something like the Lake to Lake yep. run that all goes into the pot though that keeps this facility operation. Yeah, things like the uh, we use it for education programs to run, but also for operational costs. You know, because there's a and lot. And now you're building. Yeah, we're building. Plus, we have already five other buildings on property. So, you know, our office, and so we have to add another building to this. So, obviously, all our costs go up. You know, so uh, so the, these kind of events kind of really are crucial to uh, keeping the sanctuary open for the public. Yeah, and and yet, as much as you want people to use it, uh, you really have to try to preserve a as much as you can the natural setting. Yeah, that's why we ask people to stick to the trails. You know, not to walk into the forest, you know, stick to the trails. Uh, and we're working on preserving our land, you know, because there's a lot of developments around us, you know. So we want to make sure that we preserve what we have. That would be one of the biggest uh, battles someone would have to fight, I think, that the area is so rich with development uh, in terms of... Uh, Housing cabins, uh, hotels right. in the various areas, and yet you're you're sort of isolated in the middle of this yep. developing area, and you don't want to develop. Right. No. We we're we uh, our our lease and our land, well, not our lease, but our land um, is basically protected for ever. So no, it's, no. it's not going anywhere. It's not. It's never going to convert to housing or anything like sure. that. Sure. So. Let's get back to the 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 run once again. The date for it and the time and the registration. Sure. It's Oct Sunday, October twentieth. Uh, the race starts at nine thirty, and the walk starts at nine thirty as well. Uh, registration. Uh, people can register at pro property that day at eight o'clock to nine, or so to the start of the race. Uh, but you can also go onto our website. Lackwack.org. There's an online link to do it through Scranton Running Company, or you can actually send in. There's a link for the paper registration. People can print it out and mail it into us, or bring okay. it that morning. So anybody who's into the walking and the running ought to consider being involved in this, not only because it's a fun event, but because it does support all of the efforts at the sanctuary. Some of those efforts you mentioned uh, involve other programs beyond those offered to the school groups. Right. Uh, I think you mentioned yoga, for instance, something right. like that. Are there other programs similar to that that you conduct at your facilities mm -hmm. on an all year round basis? Uh, yeah, we try not to do anything in the winter because it's difficult to get to the property. You know, we have a, a very steep road to get up to the property. Oh, but okay. but basically spring, the fall, we offer hikes. Like uh, we have an upcoming fall, fall foliage hike. We do uh, you know, bird hikes where we go look for birds in the, you know, the spring and the fall. You know, we have different things where we do mushroom hikes, uh, native plants. Uh, we bring in, uh, sometimes bring in live birds of prey and animals and stuff like that, too. Yeah. yeah. So there's almost always something happening there. And I guess in the winter, at least, if they can manage the hill, they can at least yeah. visit. You can still visit in the winter. It's just we don't do any programming. Okay. Well, yeah. Craig, I thank you so much for joining us. Good luck with now the sixth annual Lake to Lake Run, right. Walk, and what would they call the dog? What dog wag. The dog wag. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, it's all for a great cause. I thank you for explaining once again all the efforts that go on there and why they're important. It will be interesting to see when we have you back next year to talk about changes in the lake itself and what you're finding in right. terms of temperature, in terms of 
uh, aquatic life there and even just levels of water. We've had a, a long dry spell yep. this year and uh, bound to be in effect. Right. Yep, so we'll, we'll keep you updated. Okay, thanks, Greg. Thank you, appreciate Greg it. Greg Lukacs from Lackwack Sanctuary joining us today on ECTV Live. Mark McGlory, thank you so much for your work behind the scenes. I'm David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Till we see you again next week, here's hoping all your news is good.